Uh, can you all hear me, or should I sp speak a little louder? Or, we're pardon, a little bit louder. Okay, let me move in. We have the blower going on, which which interferes with the hearing sometimes. Um, what I do in general is to help students. Normally, on a on a normal day, they'll walk in and they'll say, "I don't know what I'm what I want to do," and so. What I normally try and do is talk with them a bit about uh, what have their interests been in the past, what classes did they take that they liked, and this is always a good indication because sometimes when we pick a class and we like it, we realize, oh, I could do that. And so we're, we're always investigating what else can I do. Has anybody ever been laid off from their job? Ah, okay. Did you ever, I'm going to pick on you too, then did you ever come to a spot where you say, I have no idea what to do next? Yeah, I've, I've been that way too. I, when I moved from Vermont down to here, all of a sudden I thought, oh, I'll just pick up another teaching job and I'll be fine. First person I spoke to said, lady, I haven't hired anybody in 10 years. And I thought, oh my God, I need to completely change how I look at myself. And I did. I always saw myself as one job title. And all of a sudden, I had to realize that I have no clue. And of course, I immediately says, I can't do anything. You know, I just felt sorry for myself. And so one of the books that I absolutely read, and this was 100 years ago, <laughs> but, I, but I, oops, she took the books. Uh, what Color Is Your Parachute is a super, super good book. It's what I don't like about it. There's so much information in it that you feel like you're overwhelmed. But if you can take it little piece by little piece, it really does help you to better understand who you are as a person. One thing I had never done in my life was do career exploration. How do I explore a career to see if I like it or not? And so I, re I literally started from scratch. I, at the time, I had, I had taken a job volunteering, actually not a job job, but I volunteered in a career services office just to see what can I do. And so I was basically helping myself, but also helping some of the kids on campus, figuring out what, what is it that they, they're looking at? How do they look for a job? So I was helping myself and helping them at the same time and learning a whole lot about what is it that I, I want to be doing? And I realized I liked what I was doing on a volunteer basis. So one of the ways you can explore a career is just say, I have a few uh, hours in a week. Could I come in and help out? And what that does is without being paid, without being kind of under the umbrella of being an employee, you can be more relaxed and say, let me try this, let me try that. Now let me, when I come and come to Fall River or to New Bedford, uh, one of the biggest things that I like to give people are two career assessments. Has anybody ever taken, and they're just questions like, do you like this, do you like this? Has anybody ever taken anything like that? Ah, accurate? Not really. Not really. Yeah. Were they online, so they're real short? Uh, people online, uh, online did not yeah. work with me at all. Yeah. The problem with online, I like them, but they're, they're not accurate. They just show a little piece of you. And so that's the difficulty with this. But th what they do is at least they get you started to think about what am I interested in and so on. Now, two things that I give you, let me write them on the board. Oh, let me, let me train that. The two, you take them online. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is this familiar with anybody? Okay. If you haven't taken these, I, well, I, I really recommend you do that. There are two of them, and they're very different from each other. So I encourage you to 
take them on two separate days. When I have somebody come in and I talk to them about the career assessment, what I do is I, I'll, I'll kind of get, get to know that person, but, and then I'll go over the directions with that person. They, I have written, them out, written out directions, and, and actually you have some too, don't you? You have some, some of those directions? Yeah. Okay. So what you do is you follow the directions exactly what they are. And on the directions, they're just, they have MBTI, Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, but it's the Myers-Briggs. And then the strong interest inventory is just the strong. And so what they do is they help you to understand, do I like this? Do I like that? And it's all based on like. Now, why is it important to have a career assessment that's based on what you like? That's a big duh question, <laughs> isn't it? If you're doing, has anybody ever done what they don't like? Ah, probably everybody here. Could, would anybody be willing to tell me some, one of the things they did on their job that they didn't like? Yes? Peace work. Peace work. Boring? Stressful. <laughs> Why? Um, when I first came to this country, I wasn't brought up with uh, this work, and uh, I had to do that. I couldn't deal with it. Yeah. But I had to do it. You so. had to do it. Yeah. Yes. So sometimes we have to go into a career. Am I getting the post right in the middle here? <laughs> we get into a career that's simply to put food on the table. Yes. Okay. And that is a choice that we sometimes need to make. In our heart, though, we say, this is not for me. This is not the right job. And so you ha keep that in your mind because that's, that's very important. You should not do something you hate to do for the rest of your life. Uh, and we sometimes... What I, when I tell a student come in and I talk to them about these two career assessments, I want to tell them, I want you to take this career assessment based on what your heart says, not what your head says. And sometimes they don't understand that. Can anybody explain the difference between your heart and your head? How you answer things? What you feel or what you think. Good, good. What you feel and what you think. When I feel something, I like it or I don't like it, or I'm disgusted with it, or I, I, boy, I never want to do that again. What I think is, all right, how much does it make? What do I have to do to get that type of job? What type of education do I need? All thinking questions. Now, we have to think. However, I want you to choose from your heart first, and that's why I had spend time talking to people about the test itself. You'll get better results when you answer from your heart, how you feel about things. Uh, there's an old phrase saying that says, wherever you go, there you are. And I thought that was the weirdest thing I ever heard until I began to think about it. Wherever I like and dislike, I take that with me. I'm not going to change just because I changed places. And therefore, I better know what I like and dislike. And so these, what I love about these tests, I've been giving these tests probably over 20 years. That's older than some of you people here. But <laughs> I've used them so often, and they still work. A little history on Myers and Briggs. They were a mother and daughter team in the 1920s, way back. And they wrote, they developed this test to actually for the Army. And the Army says, we don't, we don't understand. How come people don't like what they do? They're not doing a very good job. And it's like, come on, common sense. If, they, if you're a desk person and they stick you under a Jeep and you have to fix the Jeep, you're probably not going to be happy. And so the test just lots, 126 questions, it's a long one, of like, do you like this? Uh, what would you, yes? Do you get tired after a while? That's do I get tired? Of, no, no, I mean, oh. that's a lot of questions. I've never taken one. And that's a very good question. Anything, anything that is thorough is long, probably long. And so even though it is a long test, uh, it covers a lot of information, and that's what you want. You want to say, what does it represent for me? When I first took this, I was really skeptical because what it does is it takes all of you 
and puts you into one of 16 categories of people. And I'm thinking, you can't put somebody into a category, come on. Well, when I got my results back, it was like, how do they know this stuff? And I was really surprised how thorough it was because I answered for my heart, not my head. But we take, we take both pieces with us, so it's a struggle sometimes. Uh, sometimes you want, it depends, because it gives you a couple choices. And then you're stuck with, it depends. And what I encourage you to do is look at it. What was the first thing that came into my mind and my heart before the, well, yeah, but, and the yeah, but is thinking stuff too much. So we want to go with that route. So the Myers and Myers Briggs, actually, a lot of companies give this. What do they want to know? Pardon? You're going to look for their company. Exactly, exactly. Does your personality fit the personality of the job? You ever think of a job having a personality? Yeah. yeah. You talked about boring. That's a special personality of a person who likes to do everything the same way every single day. For you, it's boring. For them, it's, oh, God, I love my job. And so they want to make sure you're a good match. And this really does help. And it helps you. Today, our little piece is on career exploration. It helps you explore what is the personality of this job? Am I going to be a good match for the job? And I have a feeling many of us took jobs that are not a good match. Just giving us money, we have to feed everybody, but we're not happy with it. So the idea is to eventually get something that you like, because your personality is going to be so much better because you like what you do. You go home, you're smiling, yeah, you may be tired. Yeah, you may have had really bad days. But for the most part, you've had a good day. And that's the important thing. You'll live longer. You'll be healthier because of the fact that you like what you're doing. Now, the strong is sh on, the f on the directions. They're strong. It's just a short word, strong. But what they're looking at is what do you like? What do you dislike? Again, a very long one. And therefore, what I would really encourage you to do is take them on two separate days. And also, if you're having a bad hair day, don't take it at all. <laughs> Anybody ever have those? We want you in a good mood because you'll get the most, the better results. And so with the strong, it'll take all of your likes and dislikes based on careers and put it, it's computerized. So you will come up with probably 14, 15 pages of here are the things I like to do, and those are the strongest ones, and then here are the things, uh, if I have to do them, well, I'll do them, but not too happy with it. But it gives you a lot of results, and then it gives you, here are some things that other people do that are very similar to you. So I love the information that I get from that because it's very comprehensive. And both of them, both the Myers-Briggs and the Strong are, are a little bit different from each other, and yet you're still looking at you in all the pieces of, of who you are. So I strongly recommend them. Um, if you're a student, you're definitely welcome to take them. And if you do take them, then when I come in, I, I'd like to go over, I, I need an hour with you because I like being thorough. Was there a question here? Yes. I'm going to take them, and I have a question uh -huh. on any one of them. Can I give you a call? Because when You I can. Give, you can. Yes. Right. Mainly because sometimes, because you're from another country, the words may be yes. not clear. It's not just that, but mm -hmm. for me it's like, it depends on the question asked. Mm -hmm. is, I don't know, it could be yes, it could be no. Okay. Where I am you're thinking saying, from your head right now. Okay. Go. And this is too hard to kind of explain, but when you look at the question, there's something that goes on immediately. That's what you want. Those of you in, who have gone to high school, did they tell you your first answer is your best one? It is, because that's your most instinctive answer. But that's a hard one, because our head fights with us. Yeah, you're, sometimes you're at war with yourself. I should say this, but I'd love this instead. And then you're in a battle. And my job is not to take care of the battle, but help you look at what you like to do. And your head may say, yeah, but that's not realistic. That's another head answer. So 
It, but and it is your choice. I have taken jobs strictly for my head. How much did it pay? Oh, great office. You know, I in the middle of, of, of Providence, and my heart was saying, "Don't take it. It's not good." But my head says, "Oh, but look at how much it pays." <laughs> and so, my head won. Eventually, my heart won because my heart says, "This is not a good place." And eventually, I had to I had to leave. And so to save yourself that, start with your heart. Your, give your heart a lot of credit for knowing. Uh, when I was in school, my advisor says, Marge, you can trust yourself to know. And I said, that's the weirdest thing I ever heard. And yet, you can trust yourself, but we don't. <laughs> we always go with somebody else. But we, this is where these tests are so good because they do help you. If you answer them according to what, how, what I really feel like, good stuff. So I strongly recommend it and Debbie has, has directions or um, and then when I come in uh, you can, I'm happy to go over them with you because they will come to me. Um, now what you also can do if you're available I can I'm over in Fall River more than here please come to Fall River I can spend a longer time with you. Yes? So these tests we take we contact you to take or we take them You off. can get the directions. Do you still have them or should I send you more? Okay. She has she has the directions. And then follow, when you follow the directions, then uh, when you're completely finished both of the tests, uh, you can either secretaries upstairs, give them a, uh, go in and see them and, and make an appointment to see them to see me and we can spend some time going over it. So it, good stuff though, really good stuff. So first thing when people walk in my door, I, I talk to them about taking the, the Myers-Briggs and the Strong because they're really a good starting place. And sometimes that's the point, we don't know where to start. We're just kind of stumped. Okay. Now, when we're, when we're looking at career assessments, uh, we also look at uh, what's online that I could check out. Now, the, the, uh, the person who, who helps you in the library had a very good site, the Occupational Outlook Handbook. There's another one that I especially like that let me show you. If I can get this to go. There we go. Put you on hold. Now, I know it's, oops, maybe I can open this up a little bit more. Any better? A little bit, not much. Okay. Okay, good. Now, the Massachusetts Career Information System is really a good one. What I do is I just put in, can you see that far back M-A-S-S-C-I-S? -S -S? Or I'll put it on the board here. You don't need all the WWs and all that. Just put in M-A-S-S-C-I-S. -S -S. Oops, let me, let me go to this one. Ah, this is what I want. Okay. So you see, I don't know why that keeps bumping in there, but there's a nice little lighthouse and, and all of this. It's all kinds of ways you can use this site. Now what I'm going to do then, I'm going to assume you're a Massachusetts resident. So as soon as you get this site, click onto Massachusetts resident. And then, we're all adults, click on adult. Now. I don't know New Bedford's. I'm going to put in Fall River since I know that. So you're going to put in the city or town that you live in and your zip code and then you're going to click sign in. Now you get this page, you can use this for resume writing, you can do all kinds of things, but I'm going to, because that's what I'm doing right now, 
we're, we're going to click on to occupations. And then scooch all the way down to occupations. And here we have five million job titles in alphabetical order. Okay, so your job then, once you finish the strong especially, and it gives you some ideas of types of jobs, actual job titles uh, that you are interested in, then you put the job title here, wherever you want. Um, let's say that you want to be an accounting clerk or an actor or something like that. So you're going to click on those. If you see a little bubble, they show a nice little video with that. So just for a conversation, let's say you want to be an accountant. Oops, I don't know what this is. Yeah. So I don't know how to get rid of that thing. But what it does is it gives you little clips on what that job will actually do. I can get rid of that. That would be good. Nope. All right. Ah, here we go. So they give you some what I call quick facts. I don't want to spend a lot of time reading. Just give me the facts. And so they, they show the wages. Employment would be, is that occupation going to be necessary? And is it growing? And every year, is it good? So it gives you real quick snapshots. What I also love about it is if I want to do I want to figure out what that job says. Let's, let's click on the skills and abilities. This is also going to help you on your interview because it's going to help you to understand better what the job is asking for. So if anybody's an accountant, communications, problem solving, math and science, how you look at things, how you work with people. This is a great site. And of course, there are lots of them. But I, I especially like this because it's really concentrated into one, one area. Uh, it also tells you wages. How do I prepare? In other words, schooling. And all, so all kinds of things you can click on. And also other, just other occupations based on taking care of people's money. So it's, it's a really, really good site that I use a lot. Once you've taken your strong, especially, you have started to look at jobs that I could do, and jobs that I'm interested in. All right, how am I doing on time here? Okay, one, two, three, good. Now, has anybody ever talked to anybody else about what they do for work? You're, kind of, you're sitting down and you say, what do you do for work? And the person says, Oh, I'm in accounting. And you say, do you like it? And the person says, nah, it's boring. You know, well, how do you get started in that type of job? Well, you know, I, I, had, a, I had a grandfather that was an accountant, and I just followed him along. So sometimes talking to people about what they do, you're going to get likes and dislikes about that job. Do you believe everything they say? No. You know, you've heard the whole phrase, you can't compare apples and oranges. You can't. Okay, so you will come into this world having a kind of an outlook on things that you might like to do, and somebody else will say, oh, I, I, can't, I can't believe you're doing that. And you say, but I like it. And so this is something where talking to people who actually like what they do is very important. Also talking to people who don't like what they do. So you get the good and the bad and get an idea. That's what is called informational interviews. Now you guys tend to do it a little bit more. Ladies, we do, oh, what, what's your favorite recipe? <laughs> or clothing, or babies. And so ladies, we have to get more used to how do you get into this type of field? Do you like what you, so you're gonna talk work. And that's a different conversation than babies and clothing and, and fashion and things like that. But if we need to work, we need to find out what we're going to be doing. Good career exploration that way. Now, I have a quick clip for you on what is called informational interviewing. I am interviewing you for information. I've, whoops, I keep thinking that book is still there. What Color Is Your Parachute gave me the first idea on how to interview. When I moved down here, could not find a job, I began to talk to people. 
and I'd call him on the phone and say, um, I'm in between jobs right now, and I'd like to talk to you about the type of work you do. And of course, one of the first things they say is, we're not hiring right now. And I, and I have to tell them, uh, right now I'm not interested in being hired, I'm just interested in, will I like this type of work? And every once in a while I'll get, well, yeah, come on in. And so I would do that. It takes a lot of courage for me to do that because I'm talking to strangers who I, do, I feel like they're going to judge me. And so it took me a while to do this, but that's how I got into career planning. I started volunteering my time and then talking to people who actually did it. And one of the people said to me at the end of the conversation, you know, we're, we're hiring in the fall. Would you be interested in applying? Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually how I did it. I would not have gotten into the career planning area if I hadn't got enough courage to talk to strangers about what they did for work. It takes courage. But in the long run, it pays off so well because you start to avoid things you don't want to do and you start going towards things that you really would like to do. So a real quick clip on interviewing. Informational interviewing, that is. Now let me kill this off. All right. And this. This. this is a great site if you want to find out about different types of careers. I'm going to, when I'm in on the interviewing one, I'm going to show some clips. But uh, there's an a, a organization called, I don't think you see this back there, Career Spots. And they, they, these are all videos. And so great, it's a great source of information on, and normally you have to pay for this. But if you go in through a college, I'm going in through Illinois, the College of Illinois. So then they give it free. So you click on that and they give you all kinds of little three or four minute sp uh, spots that you can read and, and, and even see what would that person do. So I'm going to click on to the informational interview. Yeah. I understand that it's not a, a you hear, okay. interview where you should expect that you're going to be hired. It's not necessarily to get a job. It's more to network with companies to find out what career opportunities are out there, to give you practice when you actually do go on real job interviews. I've never done an informational interview. I hope to gather some information about the company. I've never done one, but I think that it is crucial to learn what types of jobs are available in the company and what the company is about. Hi. Thanks for meeting with me today. Hello, how are you? My name is Bill Evans. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you saying me. You should definitely do research about the company, even if it's just hopping on their website, um, getting some basics, headquarters, divisions, new product offerings. You should bring your resume. This copy of my resume. I would love somebody to come in, shake my hand, and make sure they give me the resume so I have basically their life in front of me, you know, what they've done, what they've accomplished. Any notes that you have on the company, any questions that you have in mind that you want to ask the interviewer. And I wanted to learn more about the opportunities here at Syntas for someone with my experience. You can ask about the company itself. You can also ask the interviewer about his or her personal experience with that company. You can also ask about the job itself, what um, objectives and goals that you'll be expected to achieve. What type of entry-level positions do you currently have? I'm sorry? Uh, we have a program for college graduates for, it's called a management training program. How often do you guys, uh, CentOS, hire uh, recent graduates, uh, do they typically have to go through the intern program first? Based on my resume and my experience, where do you feel I would be a good fit in the company? That's a great question. Yeah. Can you yeah. give me an idea of what the salary range would be for a new hire? You shouldn't ask the salary question right away in an informational interview. It's inappropriate, and it really depends on what job you're interviewing for. Uh, that's something that you, of course, wait until your offer stage. Then when you're at the offer stage, then you see if it fits your, um, your, in your budget or what you can live off of. No matter if you have class after or class before, you should still be dressed in a full business suit, 
clean shaven for boys. Um, girls, you should not wear lots of makeup, a lot of jewelry. Keep those things to a minimum. If you're going to interview at a business, I would make sure that you are in a business suit. Um, something that's not distracting. It was interesting to know that if I am going to be coming to a, a, a corporation like this, that I should be wearing a suit. And so I think right off the bat, that was something that struck me as something that I needed to learn. And I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today. This has been really informative. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for coming in. Show great interest. I think the interview overall went uh, fairly well. I would give him an A, of course, because uh, he came prepared, he looked the part, he spoke the part. So I have my resume. Um, can I have your business card? Sure. Thank Here you. It is. It was great meeting you, Stephanie. Great meeting you, too. And I think that she was impressed with my resume. Her interviewing skills were superb. I mean, I, I couldn't have done it if I did it myself. Either by email or by phone. You should ask what the best method of contact is. Some people prefer one or the other. It's very important. It shows the company that you're interested in that company. It gives great practice um, to, to interview for a real job. The payoff will most likely be down the road. Okay, so you can see how this could be really scary or it could be very, very helpful, or all of those things, but very, very useful in weeding. It's your job to weed and say, uh, I don't know if I like that type of job, but another place you say, yeah, I could do that. And you're, so you're always kind of questioning yourself. Is there a question here? Oh, yes. I, have a I, mean, I, didn't, I never knew that you went to get into that you can ask them about the job. Yeah, again, I'd be careful about salary right off. But you could say, what does, an, what does a person within this position do on a daily basis? And so, I, and I, in fact, I have some questions that you can take with you to ask and kind of go through them. You, I think there are 25 questions. You don't want to ask all 25. But it will give you, yeah, you know, there's 20. There's, but what, question number one, what do you do on a typical day is a good question to ask. If you get bored easily, you don't want a you don't want a job that every single day is alike, uh, and so you want to look at the variety and, and that type of thing. Uh, so I'm going to actually I'll start that here, and feel free to take one. Uh, but I strongly advocate going on an informational interview because what it does is it just number one it gets your face in the door. And you, you're looking at yourself and your heart and you're saying, could I work here? And sometimes you're walking in and you say, nah, this is a little too corporate. I want something more relaxed. And so that's, it really helps you without having to make a decision, helps you to look at what your likes and dislikes are within this specific job. And again, you're weeding, weeding things out. Now, what I liked about the film is at the end of the uh, interview, you write them a thank you note. What's the good thing about a thank you note? They over you. Yes, yes. How many of you have gotten a thank you note? How sad, one person. Okay, which means that you have, it has impact, I bet you have it on the wall or something. Yeah, I have a whole stack of them on my calendar because if I'm having a bad day, I'm going to look at that and say, oh, I, I can do something right sometime. But they, what they do for you is they help you to be remembered. And if you're forgotten, you're forgotten. But if they remember who you are and that you came in to ask questions about this type of job, you weren't looking for a job, you were just finding out, is this a good match? That's the best thing in the world. So that thank you note is just a real quick one about I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me about such and such. Uh, I learned a lot from our conversation, especially and if you can remember some of the things that you said and they said, bring that into the card. And it does, again, it doesn't have to be real short, uh, real long. You can go to the drugstore and get nice, nice little thank you cards. Sometimes. That's all you need to do. Handwritten, unless you're like mine and you have awful handwriting, handwritten is better than computer. Why? more personal that's what that's the touch you always want to have is the personal touch and again 
one out of how many people here has received a thank you note, that means you're going to knock their socks off if you send them a thank you note because, man, they're going to remember that you took the time to do this. So courtesy really does help. It shows that you as an employee know how to be grateful. Very, very important type of skill to have. So informational interviews is the, one of the best things I ever did for myself. Again, you're, it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be scary probably, but l get through it. Uh, there's a good book out there called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that's what I had to do. And so take your list of questions and they, some of them will tell you, well, we're not hiring right now. I don't have time to see you. Be a little more assertive and just say, well, right now I'm not ready to get a job, but, and I really would only need about 15 minutes of your time. And then follow up with being there on time. I like the, I like the fact that they said dress the part. You don't want to wear jeans and uh, things that look like, uh, it's the attitude, ah, it's only an inter inter uh, interview based on information and that's it. Look the part. You never know what they will remember. One place that I went to, I didn't want the job but because I just wanted to investigate and I kind of weeded it out. But this guy kept sending me job openings. and. Finally, I had to write to them and, and say, I really thank you for the time you took with me and the information you're sending me. At this point, I'm looking in other directions, but I will keep in contact with you and let you know how I'm doing. Just something nice. And, and in that way, it's very helpful in getting your foot in the door, maybe, or at least saying, hmm, not such a hot job. I don't, I don't think I want this. Any questions about informational interviewing? Has anybody ever done it? Ah, good, 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 good. In and were you happy with what you did? Yeah, I like I had dressed nice. And I actually, my, I went like 15 minutes early before my interview, like the time, so I went a little early. Good. I had my, I had my folder, I had one folder of my resume. Yeah. And then I had uh, two um, um, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking your time to talk to me and then I gave her a room. Excellent. Excellent. She looked at it and then, um, but I didn't ask a question about the, so that was one thing I liked. Mm -hmm. because I never knew you can ask. You can. Question about the company. Yeah. But, um, I got hired right away. Hey. Hey. She said that she liked how I, I kept saying thank you, like these, and she liked yeah. the resume that I gave her real quick. Exactly. And she's like, I kind of knew right from the top where you, where you are. Nice. Nice. So that all this face in the door, FaceTime as they call it, really does pay off. And in, in maybe it will work, maybe it won't. But if you don't get yourself in there, nothing happens. So it, it's a positive type of activity to, to yeah, really get into. They're, they're not thinking they're hiring, mm. but you all of a sudden by your presence, they start to think of you in their business. You never say, I want to work here, but you just are you know putting your skill set in front of them, and all of a sudden they say, you know, there is this possible position that's opening up because you're there. And the other thing that really triggers in an interview is to ask them for help. You know, no, I'm not looking for a job here, but can you give me some suggestions of where I might go? Would you please help me? Because everybody likes to help people. So if you can appeal to the help side. Hmm. Yeah. So thank you. It's definitely even your friends can be a network for you of just saying, and you're not going to say, do you know of any jobs available? Because we, we hate telling people no. We, we feel bad. But if you can just say, if you could keep me in mind if you hear of something, and have your resume with you. So you're going to give your resume to a friend who you're not going to work for, but they may pass it on to somebody else. So the, the whole, it's like a chain link fence. One thing is connected to another. And if you're able to make all kinds of connections with people, eventually something happens. And so it's being courteous. It's being uh, on time when you have to go someplace. It's having your resume available if they need it. Uh, some informational interviews don't want to see your resume. So have it in a folder and keep it there. And if they bring up the subject, or you can say, well, I have, an in I have a resume uh, if you'd like to see some of the types of work that I've had. Uh, so it, you have to kind of play it by ear. Because you don't want to be so eager that 
that they feel like you're, you're pressuring them to get a job. But on the other hand, here's, I have it available if you're interested. So uh, any, any other questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, so all set.